Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 5 Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron, and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thou wast he that leddest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years over all Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking, David cannot come in hither. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same as the city of David. And David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up to the gutter and smiteth the Jebusites and the lame and the blind that I hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said, The blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort, and called it the city of David. And David built round about, from Millo and inward. And David went on and grew great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, and carpenters, and masons. And they built David an house. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. And David took him more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem after he was come from Hebron. And there were yet sons and daughters born to David. And these be the names of those that were born unto him in Jerusalem, Shammua and Shobab and Nathan and Solomon, Ibhar also, and Elishua and Nepheg and Japhiah, and Elishama and Eliada and Eliphalet. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David, and David heard of it, and went down to the hold. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hand. And David came to baal Perazim, and David smote them there, and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place, Baal Perazim. And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. And the Philistines came up yet again, and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be, when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so, as the Lord had commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gezer. Psalm 103 Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. 
He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Good morning, friend of mine. The hymn writer writes, The golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy children to their promised home. May the second coming of Jesus find us ready. And in that great getting up morning, my friend, I fear you well. I fear you well. Today we are focusing on Psalm 103 and on 2 Samuel chapter 5. Psalm 103 and 2 Samuel chapter 5. Psalm 103 verse 2 to verse 5 declares, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crongeth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Today's message is entitled, Three Reasons to Bless God. Three Reasons to Bless God. Let us pray, dear God. We ask now that you would be our teacher and our guide. May your Holy Spirit hover over each listener, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Psalm 103 has been described as one of the most exuberant of the Psalms. It is the spontaneous expression of a heart full of praise to God for his grace and compassion. In this psalm, David praises God for blessings in his own life in verses 1 to 5. He also tells of the loving kindness God exercises towards his children generally, generally in verse 6 to verse 14. He also shows man's dependence upon the mercy of God in verses 15 to 18, and he invites the whole creation to worship God in verses 19 to 22. Psalms 103 and 104 are companion psalms. Psalm 103 celebrates the wonders of God in his compassion and mercy, and Psalm 104 celebrates God's wonders in creation. The psalmist calls upon us in our text for today to bless the Lord, to bless the Lord. According to the Hebrew word for bless, barak, when God blesses a person, it means that God endows that person with beneficial gifts or declares the person to be so endowed. When a man blesses God, it means that he acknowledges God as the dispenser of valuable gifts. We say that again, when a man or woman blesses God, it means that he or she acknowledges God as the dispenser of valuable gifts. In the Old Testament, people are frequently said to bless God. For example, in Psalm 63 verse 4 and Psalm 145 verse 2, Psalm 103 highlights three reasons why we should bless God and why we should acknowledge Him as a generous God. The first reason, according to Psalm 103 and verse 3, is that we must acknowledge God as the one who pardons all our iniquities and who heals all our diseases. 
we must acknowledge God as the one who cleanses us from sin and who restores our health. Now, forgiveness of sins is the first and greatest of benefits and is therefore placed first as that for which we ought above all else to bless God. God's forgiveness of sin is a frequent topic with the psalmist. You find that in Psalm 25 verse 18, Psalm 51 verse 9, Psalm 85 verse 2, and in other Psalms. Friend of mine, this is a great reason for us to bless God. The fact that he pardons our iniquities is a reason to bless God to acknowledge him. You see, the heaviest burden that we bear is the burden of sin and guilt. We say that again. The heaviest burden that we bear is the burden of sin. If we were left to bear this burden, it would crush us. Oh, but the sinless one, Jesus has taken our place. The Bible says the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all, according to Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6. Jesus has borne the burden of our guilt, and he will even today take the load of guilt from our weary shoulders. He will give us rest. The burden of care and sorrow also Jesus will bear. He invites us to cast all our cares upon him, for he carries us upon his heart. The text also says that God heals our diseases. You see, friend of mine, among the greatest blessings which we receive of God is recovery from sickness. We must always thank God for health and strength. Because Acts chapter 17 and verse 20, it says, that is in him, God, we live and move and have our being. And so we must praise God and not take our health for granted. We get a little cold and it passes and we take it for granted. But that cold could, could develop into something worse, like maybe pneumonia or tuberculosis or something. And so even if we have been in surgery or not experiencing a hundred percent of health we must still thank god for the health that we have we are in our right minds we can think we might be paralyzed but we can still think we might be able to walk and run and say we have never been in hospital we must thank god for that because that could change in a moment we must remember to thank god for health and strength the second reason we must bless god or acknowledge him as a good god is because he redeems us from destruction david says and crowns us with loving kindness and compassion the second reason we must acknowledge god as a generous god is because he redeems us or protects us and he crowns us with loving kindness and compassion you know when sickness seems about to become mortal or when danger threatens us from foes whatever they are God steps in and redeems us, or he saves us and rescues us. God also crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. God rescues us many a times, as we remember when we read Psalm 116 verse 8 and Isaiah chapter 38 and verse 16 and verse 20. It is God who delivers us and protects us. Yes, friend of mine, it is God who delivers us and protects us. David again from experience says in 2 Samuel chapter 4 and verse 9 he says that it was God who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity and that God is the one who crowns us with loving kindness David says he says in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 10 the Bible says David said bless be thou Lord God of Israel our father forever and ever bless bless be thou lord god of israel our father forever and ever and he continues in first chronicles chapter 29 verse 10 to verse 13 david says thine o lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine thine is the kingdom o lord and thou art exalted as head above all, both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might, 
and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name, O friend of mine. Never forget that all that we are and all that we have, as far as our health is concerned, is because of the goodness of God. He protects us day by day. David tells us thirdly that we must bless God and we must acknowledge him because he satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. He satisfies us with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. You see, God satisfies the reasonable desires of his servants. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17 declares, that God has given us all things richly to enjoy. And Psalm 145 and verse 16 says that he satisfies the desire of every living thing. God blesses us so that our youth is renewed like an eagle. The meaning is, not thy youth is renewed as an eagle's youth is, for an eagle's youth is not renewed. But thy youth is renewed and is become in its strength like an eagle. We say that again. When the Bible mentions that God renews our youth like the eagles, it is not saying that our youth is renewed like an eagle's youth is. For an eagle's youth is not renewed. But what the text is saying is thy youth is renewed and is become in its strength like an eagle. Oh yes, thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The eagle is long lived. And as naturalists say, when she is nearly a hundred years old, cast all her feathers and fresh ones come so that she becomes young again. And also the eagle would change her feathers in great measure every year at molting time. And so when God, by the graces and comforts of his spirit, recovers his people from their decays and fills them with new life and joy, which is to them an earnest of eternal life and joy, then they may be said to return to the days of their youth. Serving God makes us healthy and strong. And so Isaiah reminds us of God's renewing power. He says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31, he says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, but they that wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. We thank God for his renewing power, O oh, friend of mine. If you're feeling physically down today, even though you slept, maybe it's time to connect with God so that he could supply what is missing. You're eating good, but you're still tired. Maybe what you need is peace of mind. And when the mind is at rest, the body rests easier. Oh, friend of mine, let us remember today to bless God, to acknowledge him, to praise him, to remember that he is the God who according to David forgives our sins and heals us from disease. Let us acknowledge God and praise him because he protects us from destruction and crowns us with loving kindness and compassion. Let us remember today that it is God who satisfies us with good things so that our youth is renewed each day and our health is restored and we feel refreshed and revived and ready to go to work each day. Oh yes, my friend, God provides. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. And you will see, my friend, when you spend quality time with Jesus every morning, he gives you extra strength for each day. And you accomplish more when you put aside time to spend with God in prayer and in his word. You accomplish more than if you 
just got up and went to work without praying and tarrying with Jesus. Oh, friend of mine, let us acknowledge God and say in the words of the song, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for the many reasons that you have given us to bless you. Thank you, Lord, for health, strength, protection, for renewal each day. And as we go through this day, Lord, may we go through this day with a grateful heart for your many blessings. Be with those who have made prayer requests once again. We lift them up before you and ask that the God of blessings will watch over them, would answer these petitions so that those who lift them up to you in prayer will find relief and answers to their questions. Guide those who need guidance, Lord. Please provide for those who need provisions. Grant healing to those who are sick and guidance to those who need your help desperately to make major decisions. Strengthen the mind of those who are writing exams. Bless our country, Guyana, Lord. Grant that by and by, Jesus Christ will be exalted and sin and wickedness and corruption will be defeated and that Jesus Christ will be exalted and that he would heal our land. Bless us, dear Lord, and take us through this day with your presence as we lay all our plans before you to be carried out or given up as your providence shall indicate. Thank you so much, Lord, for hearing and for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.